assignment. We, we just came off of the Clint reading assignment. I got a lot of really good responses. I'm really happy about it. But we're going back to doing some artwork. And this is what it looks like. Uh, you sh you'll find it as an, ex an attachment. It says um, assignment three, cross contour drawing. Um, and in the first part, and it's a, it's a still life hand arrangement in the, in the second part. So I would say this one should maybe take about 20 minutes. This one could take up to like two hours or more, depending on how much you want to go for it. This is, brings up another point that's important to me I want to get through to you. Is like when you do something like this, you have to get in touch with like the, your center. You, you, know, you have to push everything off to the side, um, get the distractions out of the way, take a deep breath, let it out, maybe go for a walk before you get started, whatever it takes to just like clean out your mind, sit down and focus on this for a while. Of course you can take breaks, whatever you have to do, but you'll know what I mean. It's like you can't be in the frame of mind where it's like, oh Mr. Nails gave me another drawing to do and like I only hurry up and get it done just like so, so I don't get an F or whatever. That's total that's all wrong. Um, this is an opportunity for you to sit down and improve your skills and, and uh, center yourself and, and, your, and get in touch with your abilities, grow your abilities, okay? And make yourself stronger. Uh, go down uh, in a quiet area and draw. I have a lamp here. I've got the door closed and I'm going to work. Um, in the first one, Take two objects, these are really good suggestions, and draw an outline, drawing like you normally would. And I want you to take measurements, like, okay, the stem of this banana is about, uh, you know, and you have the object down right in front of you, uh, about as long as the whole height of the banana is this way. And we do the comparative measurements that, you know, the tip of the, of the stem lines right up with the bottom of this part. And we do, this is how we start to get a good drawing, make sure it's accurate. Look at the negative space. It's like this space in between here and here is about the same as this space from here to here. And we make corrections. Get a good outline. And then I want you to deliberately and explicitly show me the form, whatever it is. There's not really lines like this on a boot, but like I want you to follow the ins and the outs, the dents and the bubbles, you know, whatever, however you want to say it. You know, the smile or the frown, it's an in and out up, down, whatever it is. Uh, the difference between shape and form is the, is the depth. You know, you have your length, your width, and your height, whatever, and then you have your depth, okay? Um, so show me that, and this is kind of self-explanatory. You could have just done it, but please read. And then on the second drawing, I want you to do the same thing, but don't, don't make these marks that aren't there. I want you to shade it in but I want you to let your, your mark making, your pencil movement, when you are describing what you see, follow the same form. So like when I look at my hand and I'm drawing it like this, there's lines here, this kind of goes out, and then, but then it crosses and these, these cracks, these folds go this way, this one goes this way. Um, you could get it into hours and hours. I just want you to spend a good bit of time, um, but uh, you know, do what you can, but at least do a couple hours, you know, beyond that. Um, it's up to you if you want to do more. I, I said at least three different poses of the hand. Uh, you could, these ones both have more than three, more than five even. But I would say three to five. Um, lay it out first, you know, like do the outline, put, put it in. You're also working on a composition here. You're not just drawing something, but you're putting multiple things together and you're deciding how it takes up the space on the page. This, you're deciding the size and all of that. So it's quite an undertaking. All right. So I want to look at a couple examples uh, that really relate directly to what we're doing. So the first one is Paul Revere's The Boston Massacre. Yeah, Paul Revere, uh, the guy who, who rode the horse, the British are coming, the British are coming. He was actually a silver, I think a silversmith, and uh, he did etching. And he, what they would do is they'd get a sheet of metal and a burin, which was just like a pencil, but it was just a sharp tip, maybe with like an iron tip on it, very, very pointy, and scratch 
the drawing into the copper plate and or metal plate and uh, then you would put ink on it, wipe it all off except the ink would stay down in the scratches and then run it through a printing press and that would force the paper down into those little and suck that ink up you get a really nice print, you can make many many copies um, and Albert Durer this other example was doing the same thing 300 years before um, in 1470 uh, this example is called the large horse and I want you to look at these two and compare and who described the form better we already know the answer but uh, I think Paul Revere did his in three weeks uh, very quickly to get get the news out there fast uh, it was kind of fake news uh, <laughs> one of the first ones uh, that I've seen or they like kind of only show one side and really tell the truth or they take a little shred of truth and blow it up to suit the, the cause. But it's for America, you know, so I kind of have to be on the side of it. You probably heard about that in history class, I hope. Look it up if you're bored. Uh, we can talk about it when we see each other if you want. But uh, the, uh, the horse and the, the Boston Massacre are both etchings. They both use contour, cross contour, lines that follow the form. And, uh, you know, in a painting or a charcoal, you know, you can use smudging and smearing paintbrush marks. But when you're doing an etching, all you have is line. So uh, you have to do these, these marks. So that's, that's why I'm showing these. Uh, so these two famous etchings, they both use uh, contour, cross contour. One does a little better than the other one. They're both important historical images. Uh, Albert Durer has many, many, many images. Um, not so many from Paul Revere, but I thought it was interesting to look at. Anyway, uh, in this last example, look at the two images. There's a little ink bottle and uh, a rabbit. You know, one does the contour line, the cross contour, following the form much, much better. And it's the rabbit, even though it's loose. And you look at this little bottle, it's, it's contradictory to the form. It's doing flat lines where it should be round. And it kind of destroys the, the, the image, uh, you know, the illusion of volume. It flattens it out. It's, it's kind of confusing. Sometimes you want things to be flat. There's lots of examples of just using flat shapes and everything. But that's not what we're doing right now. We're trying to incorporate the ability of showing three-dimensionality in our drawings. And that will translate over to our paintings or prints or whatever we're making. Um, even in photography, you know accentuating it with, with the lighting and so forth. It's, it's all going to be a part of, of, of what you do in your, your artistic arsenal, as I like to say. Okay, so let's do it. I look forward to your submissions, and please write me with any questions. All right, so I'm doing the first part now. I don't expect you to do anything that's going to take this long. This is so... Let's see. How should I say it? There's so much detail in this... Figure, it's almost overwhelming. It's hard to keep track of it all. Um, pick something simpler, but I can still show you what I'm talking about uh, when, when I'm drawing this. So, like, I'm I'm looking at the the, the spaces in between and making sure that I can see right now. I haven't I haven't been working on this for a while, but like this line is too far away from this. Like, uh, it's okay, you know, it'll pass, but. Uh, you know, when you're getting caught up in the drawing and you're trying to lay it all out, it's a lot of information and you can make mistakes. It's the way I don't commit to anything too soon. I say, like, his ear is actually really starting, like, right here. I can see that. And I think it's still really close. And nobody's going to see this figure. I don't know, remember who this is. I know it's not Vegeta. I know it's not, uh, uh, what's his name? I think the guy's name is Broly or something like that. Um borrowed it from my son's room. Um, Go it's not Goku. It's from one of the recent movies. It's like the bad guy. It's really a really great work of art. Just whoever sculpted this. Uh, somebody made this. Uh, they, they made a sculpture and they cast it. Now they make copies of it in plastic. But it started with an artist like you um, making this. It's really quite good. 
It's really interesting because there's so much form here. But I did a pencil drawing, you know, I did what I told you to do for this can. This is like an old tin can of uh, some kind of fluids, paint, like turpentine or something. I took for the angle, I put my pencil out and I put it right up to the angle and put it down to my paper and made sure it was the same. I'm looking at the cap and I'm doing comparative measurement. The side of the cap and the top of the cap, the distance between here and here and here and here are about the same when I'm looking at it. I'm closing one eye. You have to pick, kind of pick one eye. Try it. If I close my left, it looks different than when I just close my right. So when I'm really trying to see, I'll look through one eye because two eyes will distort a little bit um, for your your depth of vision uh, you need that but uh, when you're trying to get a really accurate location of something you just close one okay so I have enough and I made a lot of corrections it's not perfect but this demo um, I'm going to use a, a ballpoint pen and I want to look at I'm really looking at it and I'm going to follow the form with every mark I make this the pec muscle here goes like this and these striations go this way and then this way and up like this I'll, I'm going to use a pen and then I'll, I'll erase the pencil and just leave the pen. If I take my time and I was talking about like finding that inner peace or like centering yourself or whatever you do you know take the fear and the inhibition or whatever you feel like you're afraid you can't do it or something like that and just kick that right out the door because you can um, making mistakes and and getting up finished drawings that aren't that great are part of the process you have to uh, this is just dark right here but I'm still following the form it's just like a shadow but the shoulder goes like this so I'm not just you know or <laughs> I'm making my pen move across the shape the same shape it is. It's like, this is the outline of like the fabric. So I mean, it's like overwhelming with detail. There's so many rips and tears. But when the fabric falls across his chest right here, it's following the form. It's following the way it's it's falling down his chest right here. I'm not doing a random mark. I'm and this is going over the top of his chest. See what I'm doing there? The pen is great for this because it just makes one skinny little line. I think this is a good choice for this drawing. I'm not using a brush pen, I'm using just a regular ballpoint pen with a dead line, as they call it. There's some tears here. I'm able to do this quickly because I already worked out a lot of the problems uh, with pencil in advance. If you do yours in pencil, that's great, no problem. If you do yours in pen, I'll be really impressed. Uh, I'll give you a a virtual high five. <laughs> uh, okay, so you know, I know somebody will do it. A couple people will do it. I'll put, I'll post it in my video if you do it in pen. How about that? Uh, I'll be really impressed. All right, so this is the way we're going to go about doing this. I'll work on this a little bit, and then I'll show it. I don't even know if I will be able to have time to finish this today. But I think I will finish it just to show you that I really mean it and that, you know, I'll practice what I preach. I'm not going to just tell you, hey, you know, work hard and be dedicated. I'll try to do it too, even though I have a lot of things going on right now. Um, I really do mean it. And this is good for me too. It's not just good for you. So thanks. Um, I, I don't always take the time to sit down and just practice and draw. But if you want to be good, I ask a lot of these professors and stuff, uh, people, nobody can answer, like, how can I get better? The answer is draw every day, you know, draw every single day with dedication and sincere intent, really mean it, and it'll just happen, all right? Okay, I'll come back and show this after a little while longer. Alright, so <clears throat> working on this a little bit more. Um, some good tips that I've been picking up here is like to turn your paper if you have to. If you already have a good pencil drawing, you kind of know. But your hand's comfortable to move this way if you have your hand down. 
Um, there's no rule against using a ruler. You know, it's like, that would be ironic if it was against the rule to rule. We like to rule, so I just use the pencil. If I have a straight line, use a ruler. It's not cheating, that's for sure. Um, here I have like these marks on the edge of the cap of this can. They're meant so like when you go to open the can, it, it won't slip, give you something to grip. But like as things go towards the middle, the, there's usually more light like right here. So I'll just not draw them as close together or you know, see how that makes it kind of look more round right here. I'm following the form with these marks that go around right here. Uh, it's hard to decide, you know, sometimes what to do. Should I make a mark that's horizontal, vertical? Like I see it, it's kind of a mix. So I'm doing these cross contours. There are some lines that go this way. And then here I'm going to go like this way and then this way. And you know, a drawing is not a photograph and that's why it's better. It's more interesting and it's, it's made by a human. So like leave stuff out or, you know, you have to know like that's enough or like take a chance. The other side of that coin is like, well, maybe take a chance and I'll do a little more. Don't be afraid. I can, if I make a big flaw, if I'm really doing this for like a, an illustration job for like a customer or something like that I can put it in Photoshop and and, and change things that make some edits and so forth but I have to thank goodness um, but uh, yeah this is this is what I'm looking for from you a drawing uh, this is a little more simplified like on the first one where you're doing the fruit or the shoes or whatever you pick but I do want you to show me that you see